Welcome to the Science Kid Camp, day number three. So, as you can see from the title of the video, today is experiment day. Today has no specific theme, but we are just gonna do a ton of experiments. Just experiment after experiment. And I wanna make sure they're all awesome. So, before we start getting into all the experiments, I really want to start doing some trivia. So, I'm gonna pull up my phone here, and we're gonna do a bit of science trivia. Okay, so, Basically, it really doesn't matter if you get it right or wrong, but please just try to interact in the chat. So I'm going to start reading off the questions one by one. Okay, question number one. What is the essential gas that lets us breathe on Earth? Starting with something fairly easy, not extremely hard. The gas that lets us breathe on Earth. Any guesses? Well, any answers, at least. That is right. It is oxygen and air. Okay, question number two. What is the nearest planet to the sun? Just stepping it up a little bit. Just a little bit with the questions here. Mercury is correct. All right, next one. What is the largest planet in our solar system? Largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. Nice. All right. Let's see. Oh, here's a little one that's a little bit more difficult. So, what is the rarest blood type? Now, I'm talking about either O, A, B, AB, or any of them in a positive or a negative fashion. AB negative is correct. My helper person is also guessing. All right. So um, th this is the next one. So what part of the plant conducts photosynthesis? Photosynthesis, if you do not know, is the thing that plants, plants use and creates, um, turns the sun's energy and turns it into energy through its body. That is correct. It is the leaf. Okay. Second to last one. What is the largest known land animal? Land animal. Like animal that walks on earth. Not an ocean, but like land animal. Elephants! Good job, Rachel. All right, last question. Who was the scientist that proposed the three laws of motion? This man is a very famous scientist. And you probably should know who this man is. Oh, I gave a hint. It is a dude. Newton is correct, Sir Isaac Newton. All right, those are trivia questions just to get us a little bit warmed up with our very exciting day. Okay, so we're gonna start off with experiment number one. So first thing I'm gonna do is grab my stuff here. Okay, so for this experiment, you will need an empty can. Nothing in it. Empty can. Then you need a balloon and your hair. 
So, as you probably will know if you have seen the past couple days of science camp, I've had major troubles with blowing up balloons. So I now have something to help me with it. So I'm going to try using this one instead and see if I get some better results. Ah! Okay. I now have my balloon pumped up. You know, I'm not even gonna tie it. That's just a whole nother level of trouble time. I'm just gonna hold it like this. Okay, so this experiment uses a certain type of energy, which is called static. Now I'm going to ground this static electricity by taking this balloon and rubbing it against the back of my head. Now, if I go like this, you can see my hair is starting to stick up a little. I'm gonna rub it a little more. All right, so I have my statically charged balloon and then I have the aluminum can. Now you may be thinking, why do I have an aluminum can? Well, aluminum can. Watch. If I take this and I put where it was, where I rubbed it against my hair, it should, if I can get on the right side. I might have waited too long. I waited too long. Okay. Okay, one more time. No, yeah, so close. There we go. I got the candy milk. And if I take it here again, I can get the can to move wherever it was trapped. So there's a little bump here. Ah, so close. Yeah, it's out of static. The most wonderful part is blue. All right, that was experiment number one. Anybody have any questions about this experiment? So, um, I need to explain this experiment a little bit better. So, when you um, blow up a balloon and you rub it against your hair, you get static electricity. Now, once you have a static electricity, it um, creates a negative charge. And once you have that negative charge, the can is positively attracted to it, so it follows wherever the balloon would go. Explanation. Okay, time for experiment number dos. All right, so I'm gonna grab this and gonna grab this. So, I have a ping pong ball. I'm not going to talk about gravity today. What I'm going to do is something quite amazing. I, I have superpowers. Just watch this. If I keep this here, I set the ping pong ball down. I go like this. Whoa, superpowers. Go like this. Oh. 
Now, why do we think the ball stays up in the air? It doesn't just fall. It is like there's no string attached, obviously. Like I can move it anywhere. So there's no string. It is strictly air. Now, does anybody know why this happens? Is not extremely strange. Does anybody know? It is not because of static electricity. So the reason why this happens is because there's a man, his name is Bernoulli, I think, and he created a principle, which is about fast moving air. And basically it's talking about the air pressure. So whenever you have this, like this, the air here, is at a lower, it's at a lower pressure than the air outside of the stream of air that's going on here. So with less pressure, and it's really cool how you can go like this. like a simple hair dryer can produce like a different kind of air that's separated from air that's outside, which creates a stream. Okay, I'm gonna stop doing that now. It's very fun. You literally only need a hair dryer and a ping pong ball. Like standard day-to-day -day ping pong ball and hair dryer. And it's more effective on the highest mode and you don't want it to be really hot air because then you're gonna melt it, basically. And it like really deforms it. But if I have it on low, it still works, but not as well. It basically hovers. But it spins a lot faster. It just doesn't create as much wind. But if I go here, and I go on high. Okay, so that was that experiment. And just literally two things, hair dryer, ping pong ball. Not super complicated. Okay, so let's see, what am I doing next? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I have this glass, and I have these two glasses. Now you may be wondering, what is me doing with some wine glasses? Now I'm not using these to drink anything. I'm using it to make vibrations. Watch. Now this one's a little tougher because it's really small. Who is typing? I, I am magically typing with my helper person. Nope. Not not Truman. I told you I it's using science. I'm using brain power to type. Oh, I have to hold it still. This took me a while to do earlier. It's really quiet. 
And so I don't know if you have noticed this, but as I have used this glass, this glass, and this glass, there was a bit difference in the sound that it makes. Let's listen to it one more time. So let's go with the middle one first. Sounds about normal to high range. Then I take this and I go here. That sounds a lot deeper. Now we have this one. I made it for a second, but it was really quiet. Well, you can kind of hear it. But anyway, the point is that when I take water and go on the edge of the glass, like so, it makes um, waves. And it, depending on the size and length of the glass, you will get a different sound. Now, all I have inside of here is water. So literally all you need is a glass and you need some water. Okay, well, it's very light of a... <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh, man, the comments is hilarious. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh, I can't focus. Okay, but pretty much saying the difference in the glasses is between <laughs> the size and the like so the like more small and um basically smaller and taller gets a much more higher pitch sound. <laughs> okay, there we go. I made that sound that time. And then with this one, it's about, I'd say it's about the middle because it's not super tall and it's not super wide like this one. I say, wait, how, because this is like, yeah, this one's absolutely tall. But the more wide the glass is, the deeper the tone you can make. Now, I've seen quite a few people like do, like make music with these, like, because these are all, you know, different notes. Like, I'd say, that's a really low D. And then, let's see what this one is. Sounds like a high C. I have no clue what this one would be, though. You heard it that time. I have no clue what note that is, but it is very high pitched, like extremely high pitched. Cause I, that sounds a little. And all you pretty much need is glasses and water. So I'm gonna set these off to the side so they are not in the way. Okay, so the next experiment I am going to do. Oh gosh, stuff is falling. Once again, like yesterday, I have my nifty little candle, but I put it in a different piece of fruit today. Now it is an orange. So 
they didn't have any candles at Target besides this one. So, woo! It's my ninth birthday. So, pretty much how this experiment works. Once again, you need a wine glass like this. Then you need, uh, well, a candle. You don't need an orange. But, you know, you need a candle. And then you need something that's laminated, like a playing card or... Um, an index card. Pretty much, if you can breathe through it, don't use it. And then, on the bottom of that, napkin. So, I have the napkin on the bottom, I have my laminated object, I'm going to stick candle on top of this. Oh yeah, also, you need a match. And when you're doing this experiment, make sure you have adult supervision because you don't want to set anything on fire. I mean, except for the candle. So I'm going to strike a match. Woo! Now it's a party. Okay, I'm going to light the wick. Okay. Don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to take the glass and I'm going to cover the candle. Now, as you can see, as soon as I put it on, the candle was extinguished. Now, fire needs oxygen to survive. Basically, it breathes in oxygen exactly as we do to get bigger. Now, with no oxygen, it can't breathe. And without the flame inside, I can do this. I can lift it up. Now, the reason why this is happening is because it creates a vacuum inside of the wine glass. Because as soon as I set it back down, I can, there's a little sound there, and I take it off, the vacuum's gone, right? Because if I try to do it again without the candle, whoa. Now, normally when you do this, you have whites on the side, but you know, I'm an orange and it's gotta be at least like 12 ounces or something. So it really works. I'm gonna do the experiment one more time. Kind of like this. Now I'm gonna do this the same experiment I did yesterday first. Watch this. I lit it back on fire without touching the fire to the wick. Watch. Oh, they both went out. Hold on. No, they both went out at the same exact time. Okay, I'm going to try it one more time. That didn't work. <laughs> All right, so I have this. I'm gonna light it again. Okay, I'm gonna go like this. That's how I had to touch it because I didn't want it to go. Oh man, it's not working. Okay, well, anyway, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna do this one again. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on top of here. Once again, covering the candle with orange. And as soon as I touch it down, it's gonna go out, watch. Immediately. Now, this is once again, creating a vacuum and you just gotta apply pressure for literally just a couple of seconds. And you, whoo, it didn't work. Um, whoever said, what is this? This is a science thing. It's a science camp, but online for bored children. Ah! No. Aha! Well, you should stick around. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. All right. All right. I now have the candle burning again. I'm going to take this and now I have it like this and it should work this time. There I go. Voila! 
ah, it is now sticking because I once again created a vacuum. Science. It's amazing. So I'm just going to take this down and bam. See, doesn't work. But when you light it on fire and it goes out, then it does work. Does anybody want to see it again? Otherwise, I'm going to start with the next experiment. Does anybody want to see the experiment again? I'll do it again. Anybody want to see the experiment again? Five, four, three, two, one. Then we are done. Okay, so that is the end of this experiment. I'm just going to move this over to the side again. I have a lot of stuff over to the side. Then I'm going to take these and put them on. Okay, then I am going to do our next experiment. Okay, so I now have this nifty little thing. Oh, you wanna see it again? Okay, I'll do it again. There might be a tad bit of a delay, so I never know exactly how it's gonna work. Let's take this. Here, I take this off. Now, I'm just gonna list the ingredients you need again. You need, well, you don't have to use a wine glass, but it's gotta be, you know, some kind of glass. And you need a candle on a laminated surface underneath a napkin. And then you can either put like two weights on the side or like marbles or something like that to light it. Well, no, 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 to serve as weights. But it would work even without the orange. Okay, I'm gonna like this one. No, so close. Aha. Okay. Put that on water. Then I'm gonna take this and watch. The fire is now out. Oh, so there is a delay in chat. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. I'll remember that. All right. Ready? Now lift it up. Three, two, one, go! Aha! Wow! In a second, I let go. Bang! Okay. Now we are officially going to move on to the next experiment. All right, so we got our next thing here. Really quickly, I gotta plug this in. Now this one took a little bit longer of a time to get it working. Okay, it is now plugged in. Okay, so. This is a paper plate. And does anybody know what two colors we have here on this plate? What colors are on the plate? I'm gonna wait for the delay. Red and green, that is correct. Now, what happens when I turn this on? Let's observe. Now what color does it look? I'll hold it a little bit closer. No. That is correct, brown. So like when you're painting or doing pretty much anything 
with colors and you mix the colors red and green together, it will create the color brown. Now, what this is, it is called Newton's disc, but I'm calling it Newton's plate. So I'm going to take this one off. We're going to do the next color. Got to place this in here for one second. Let's go. All right, that one's up. Now, next one. What color are these? It's a little weird because of the lighting, but I probably can keep it like lower here and you can see it. What colors are these? Target colors, I guess that is somewhat correct. Now, this is kind of a little bit uh, too light, but this is baby well, baby, sky blue. And um, so let's see what color together, what color it comes together. Oh, yes, it kind of does look like a Pokemon ball. Okay, let's see. I'll hold a little bit closer to the camera. What colors do the Pokemon ball make? Lavender, yes. Well, just about. It's a light purple. I'm not 100% sure on the colors. And in chat, person, can we please get the name of this thing I'm using to make the Newton's plate? In chat. Okay, now, more colors. We have, what colors here? What colors do we have here? We have two. Once again, you got one here, one here. Matthew, don't spoil it. What colors are these two colors? Ikea colors, we'll go with that. Now we have the Ikea colors. Let's see what happens when they are Newton placed, plated together. <laughs> ah! I might have to tighten this a little bit. Because before it had the two other papers on it. Yes, yellow and blue is the answer I was looking for. Ah! There we go. Okay. Now let's try. <laughs> it's not tight enough. I'm so close to tightening it. Okay, let's try. It. <laughs> oh my god, it's made a hot sound. Well, there goes that plate. There goes the Newton disc. Does, did anybody see what color that was? Man, I got Newton's plate all over this one. I got Newton's plate in the air. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, it was the color green. Now, as you may have seen, that went a little bit backwards. I mean, in the first couple, the first two, it went good. We got the colors, but the uh, Ikea, not, not so well. Okay, next experiment. Okay, I'm gonna set this down. I'll move all this stuff out of the way. 
Ok. Now. I'm grabbing a bowl of water. This is literally just water. Now I have a glass, like a literal glass, and I have a cup with a hole in it. This one right here. I can see you. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do. Also, I forgot one the key component of this. Index card. You can use any size you want, and this is just the standard kind, I think. So, I now have an index card. I'm going to take this and fill this up about as high as I can. And then I'm going to grab this, and this is what this is for, so it can drip to the very top. It's got to be literally completely full. Wonderful sounds. All right. Okay. We now have card. I'm going to push it across. And I have it here. And I'm going to press down. I'm going to flip it over. Now, this would normally, oh, there we go. Magic. Wow. Cass, please don't dislike the stream. Okay, so we now have our insane glass of water. Think about that. That'd be a cool thing. Just carry it around at a party. You're just taking your glass upside down. You're like, yeah, I'm going to take a drink. That was very smooth. That was wonderful. Okay. So I'm going to do the experiment one more time. I'm going to grab the water. I'm going to grab a little bit more. I'm going to use this. I'm going to pour it out instead. Aha! That was way faster. Okay. We have this. Ah! Water is spilling. We have another index card. And you put it right over the top. And you press down. And some water is going to come through, but barely any. Flip it over right in the center of the index card. <laughs> well, that didn't work as a plan. I don't think I sealed it. Okay, so I'm going to try this one more time, and then I'm going to tell you guys how it works. I am now soaked. Woo! Unstuck. I don't think the cup was completely full since I spilled it a couple times. Okay, card. You slide it right over the top into just about in the middle. Then you move this over. And then there's a seal. Science! Watch what happens when I remove it. Aha, uh -huh. that's what I was planning to do in the beginning, but then, you know, last time. Kaplooey, everywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you how this works. So, man, there's a giant boil of water here now. Nice. Okay, so now I have, uh, once you have the water inside of here, there's almost no air inside. Now, this experiment has to do with pressure. So, when you have the, it completely full, then you flip it over, then the pressure inside and outside are equal, so it stays intact. That's pretty much how it works. Just fill it up. I wonder if I 
I could use this again. That'd be kind of interesting. I want to see if you can use a wet index card now. Now, literally everything is wet. Okay, I have it like this. Let's see if this works. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, that didn't work. It worked for a split second. But pretty much saying if you have the dry index card, it's going to get a little bit wet, and then you remove your hand, and it will stick like glue until you remove it. it. I think I've tried to see how long it lasts. I think it lasted about two minutes. It wasn't super long, but it is longer than you would expect a glass to stay upside down with all the water inside of it. Okay, so if you were not here yesterday, I took an extremely long time to make a fruit, well not fruit, produce powered clock. Now, this clock, I think, was touched maybe once or twice, but it still stands. So let me show you. I'm just going to walk past the plate that just blew back there a while ago. Oh, no, I disconnected it. One of the potatoes disconnected. And I spent almost, I think, like 20 minutes on this trying to get potatoes to turn on a clock. And then I replaced two potatoes with a lemon and an apple. And I got it to turn on. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start in here. It should turn on. Yeah, it does work. Woo. I don't know if you can see the minuscule one, two, zero, zero in the blinking lights, but it has turned on because if you disconnect this thing, well, I'm still touching it and it still works because your body is also a conductor. Ah! It goes away like that. But then if I touch it, doing, it works again. And then if you plug it back into the potato, I never thought I'd say that word sentence. Yeah, plug it back into the potato. Do you mind plugging, putting a plug in the potato? Yeah, just got to get this to work, this clock to work, plugging in a potato. Well, that was the checkup on the clock. It's amazing, because I literally would have never guessed that potatoes could create energy. I kind of figured that lemons could, but with a potato, never thought of it. Gonna move the produce clock back over here. Oh, something unplugged. Okay. I'm back. Okay, so now we have covered this stuff. Now this is wet, that's not good. I'm gonna grab a towel. I now have a towel because what we're going to use next has to do with batteries and I don't want anything bad to happen with batteries. Did that rhyme? I think it rhymed. Somewhat, maybe. Okay, so for a science project I did this summer, I made an electromagnet. And you can too, if you follow these simple instructions. So the things you're going to need is a battery, you're going to need copper wiring, a nail, and uh, some electrical tape. It's not super complicated. So Pretty much when you're done with it, it should look somewhat like this, but this should be connected. Now, there are some issues I've run into while doing this. 
the sides of it have become extremely hot to where it even starts smoking. Like for example, if I take this and connect it, then, well, it might not smoke. Now, I've done this quite a few times and it is not super painful. But it's not working yet. Okay, let's see if I, you know what? I'm gonna get some gloves so I can touch it normally because like I said, it's really hot and it starts to smoke. See, magic gloves. I say it and it appears. Ferrari. Oh, no Ferrari. Okay. Just gonna put on these gloves that don't have any latex in it. And I re recommend that you probably use gloves too because it's really hot. And I saw some guy doing this and he used his fingers on the on the copper wiring without any electrical tape at all. And I just thought it was crazy. It's like, why would you do this? Because it hurts fairly bad. Oh, huh, I got a Ferrari. Woo! Okay, bye Ferrari. Uh, all right. That's connected. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. So that bit of copper wiring looks a little burnt. Okay, now let's see if I can get a paper clip to hang on. Oh, no! I don't think it's fully connected. It needs to be fully connected or it's just not going to work at all. That part's good. That part connected. Oh, no! It's falling. And when you're doing this on the battery, you want to make sure that it's connected in the right spot. It's like on the very tail end. I think it keeps on sliding off there. Let's see if this works. Oh, well that fell out. It's not perfect, but I, I, I got it to work last night. So it is possible and I got it to work for my science project too. Okay, I got that on there. And I'm going to connect this one. It was working. Oh, I got the sticky part connected to here. No! Oh! Aha! I got it to work! It's not hanging, it's like on the side. Now, it only picked up one paper clip, and I don't know what the issue is with that. Might be because these paper clips are. Oh, no, we did two. Let's see if we can go for three here. We went three! Let's see if we can get all four. We got all four on there! electromagnet using strictly a battery, copper wire, and a nail that picks up stuff. That was it. I, that was purposely done. It did. The copper wiring definitely didn't just fall off. Definitely not. Now, we have done it with the D battery.
but I'm going to see what happens when I do it with a C battery because I wonder if the different kinds of a battery will create a, like a higher amount of a, a, like a higher magnitude of a, uh, like a stronger force that is created. Okay. All right, let me connect that part. No, nope, slipping. Okay, that part is officially connected. Okay. Then you want to get right on the dot here. No! It fell. Okay, let's see if I got it to work again. Oh, no! Oh, it fell off again. Okay. I think this is avoiding me. No! All right. Okay, I think I've got it to work. Let's see. No! I wonder what the issue is. I've been focusing a lot on this side. I wonder if it's not connected on the other side. Let's see if I'm right. It looks connected. It's not too high up there on this one. Maybe the electric charge isn't good enough. Maybe you can only use a D battery. I was about to do that. Woo, it works. It's not creating any charge. It's also possible that this is at a battery. If the battery has no you know, charge in it, then it does not work. Uh, magic supplier thing, can I please get another C battery? To see if I can get this to work. Yeah, it's not. This, this I'm assuming, is at a battery, because even... That's so strange. Normally... It, it mean it should work. It's literally a smaller version. Oh. Woo! Gonna dry it off real quick. Okay, it's literally a smaller version of the D battery. Okay, gonna take that. Oh. The tape does not like the copper wiring. Okay, here we go. Side right, number one, tape. Side number two. All right, let's see if it works now. What? That's connected. Then that's connected. It might just not be generating enough Magnetism. It like works for a split second. It just kind of works, barely. Stuck to my finger that time. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, I don't think it's doing enough for it. Now, if that doesn't work, I don't know about the double A. Somebody tell me in the chat if you want me to do it with a double A battery. Otherwise. Ah! 
it just doesn't it doesn't want to stick. That's really weird. Huh. It's not working. So I guess on the C battery, it doesn't even work. I'm just gonna try it with the AA battery, but I'm gonna do it once. So it's not super complicated. All right, let's see if this picks up anything. What? The double A works, but the C battery doesn't? Oh, wait a second. It worked for a second. Okay. The tape is not sticking anymore. Like I said, it burnt through. But we got it to stick with the double A battery. That's really weird. So double A works, D battery works, but no with the C battery. Interesting. All right. I'm officially out of experiment, experiments. So I will make sure to see you guys next time in some of my videos. And if you are new here, make sure to like the stream and subscribe to the channel to see all my new videos. And I'm trying to come out with at least one a week right now. So I'll make sure to see you guys next time. And also thanks to RSI for helping me and all the other people that helped me sponsor this science camp. And pretty much just thank you to pretty much everyone. All right, make sure to see you guys next time. Bye.